Welcome back. You're listening to WSB um, 90.1 FM, Stony Brook. <laughs> um, right now, I'm joined with uh, another guest. Uh, his name's called Scott Waldman. How about you introduce yourself? Um, tell us a little bit about um, what you do in the music scene. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Kyle, for having me on. I'm from Long Island, too. So when I see a 516 phone call, I get excited. <laughs> My name's Scott Waldman. I'm actually originally from New York. I moved out to L.A. in 2003 when I graduated college, University of Michigan. And I joined a band called The City Drive. Mm. And we signed with Columbia Records, played in other bands, worked at a law firm. And now I manage bands and have my own radio show in Adobe. So how long have you been managing um as a year and a half actually a year and a half a year yeah i started in march of last year so it'll, it'll be two years really soon uh so as a to- so since you were a touring musician uh what were some things that you learned that you took into managing well musicians are very particular people uh they usually wear their emotions on their sleeve so it's the kind of thing where one day you could be the best friend of someone and the other day they want to throw you into a wall so you learn a lot about people skills uh you learn about how the industry really works when you're in a band on the road as opposed to being you know behind the scenes and Mm -hmm. i've i've gotten to play shows in venues where it was only the bar staff and the bands we were on tour with and sold out shows Mm -hmm. so you know how to handle situations like that and you learn as well i mean we were on a division of sony columbia okay i learned i guess about the uh industry side so uh so i know i could talk about this a lot (laughs) so um what are some uh i'm sorry Uh, it's a little bit i made this today so it's a little bit unorganized so i apologize (laughs) you know finals and everything but um anyway good luck um next question i got for you is that um with running this management company how do you decide whether to work with a certain local artist or to not work with them well everyone starts local i mean bands like the killers start local Mm -hmm. you know so i i when i started and where i am right now I only said if I'm 100% Hmm. into it. So let's just say, you know, I was trying to pitch one of my artists to be on your show. Hmm. If I was less than A-plus enthused about it, you'd sense that, and I think it'd be game over. So first of all, I'd have to be really into it. And now I'm at the point where it's even harder for me to take a risk on someone without traction. So... I have to be 125 million percent into it now. And is, it's it's a very tough industry. So you deal with a lot of rejection. And even the bands that I have that have been doing well, I'm still not earning like a really decent income yet. So mm-hmm. it's tough. It, is it a thing where you have to look for the artists or do they also come to you sometimes? Um, well, it's it's crazy. Uh, I guess of the artists I have now, Candy Hearts was extremely organic mm. because I was just I was actually sending Candy Hearts a Mara Eyes song, and uh, and she's and Mariel said she liked it, and we were talking, and she just said, "I don't have representation," and then boom, it happened. But um, when I first started, it was me, you know, kind of saying, "Hey, I just started a management company. I'd love to work with you," um, and now. It's mostly people coming to me because I've achieved, uh, mm. I guess, very marginal degree of success. Is it just you working in this company by yourself, or do you have yeah. a whole bunch of different? Oh wow! So that it's must. Just me. So how do it's you organize all of that stuff with these uh, bands and concentrate? You know, getting all that you can for each you know it, artist that it, you um, have. It's hard. Um, I have. Uh, three interns right now that are amazing. Um, I have uh, Megan, who's basically been an assistant since the beginning. I have a girl named Emily, who's been working with me uh, since, I guess, around this year. And a really new girl named Emily, who's helping. Mm -hmm. So another Emily, but it's more 
spelled more, I guess, in an unconventional <laughs> way. So I have three girls that are ride or die and helping, but I don't have a real staff. I, I work from home. Okay. And and in this industry, your, your iPhone or whatever, your BlackBerry, if people still use that, or it's your office as, <laughs> as well when you're on the road. So being with the industry being so tough, what are some marketing strategies that like you use every day to help promote the bands that you manage? Well, it doesn't matter how many marketing dollars you have. It doesn't matter how cool your band looks or how, you know, connected you are if you don't have the product. Hmm. Because at the end of the day, yeah, you know, that could help you get some groundwork in the beginning, but that'll fade. You know, like mm. novelty will fade. I mean, William Hung, you don't really talk, hear about I, him anymore. I have so, no clue. Um, <laughs> ex- well, do you know who he is, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No one hears anything about stuff like that anymore. So you just have to have the songs. It's all about the songs. And if I'm not at the point when I'm, you know, if I hear someone who is pitching to me and I don't want to hit replay or scope mm. out the rest of their catalog, I'm done, you know, and I want, I want to be a super fan. Oh, of the that artist. definitely totally makes sense. <laughs> I'd want to be able to put them on a mix. Like if I were making you a mix right now, Kyle, yeah. like I'd want to have all my artists on it. So, uh, so let's talk about one of your artists, mirror eyes. So recently, yeah. Big news! They signed with Envoy Gre- Envoy Records. Um, Invoke, so, yeah. what is that feeling to you to help an artist get to like a major label like that? I mean, it's 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 a major label in the sense of being cool label. It's definitely yeah. not a major label technically, but it's amazing. I mean, it's every. I mean, you're on Facebook. You you're a member of probably a lot of those Facebook groups mm. like the Fen Pop Bunk and all yeah, those yeah. groups, and you see all these people promoting their bands. And all those bands would kill to be in the position that Mirror Eyes is in. So it's a, it's unreal. Um, it, it validates me as a manager and as the company that I was able to find a band. They they actually, when I started working with them, they hadn't even played a show. Wow. And I heard their music, and I saw something in it that I really liked. And you know, flash forward to now, they are officially a signed artist. So. It's great. So, it's, there's there's no feeling like it. What's that process like getting an oh. artist signed? Because that must be really complicated. Making sure that that deal, you know, is fair on all sides. Well, that my job as a manager in general, uh, regardless of whether a band is signed or not, is to look out for the best interests of the artists that I work with. Um, basically, a father, doctor, lawyer, therapist, mm-hmm. nag to all these people and I am the intermediary with everyone with an attorney uh, for their side with an attorney for the opposite side with the label with any publicity with a booking agent with everything so there was a lot of behind the scenes work that went into this Um, like when the city drive when my band signed Mm. a deal we got the offer in July and we didn't sign the paperwork till December so that's five full months (laughs) Now, for Mirror Eyes, they got the offer actually when I was in New York mm. in January, and they signed in October. So that's like three full months, pretty much. Wow. Um, yep. So what are the biggest things artists should look for in a contract? Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> um, I mean, first of all, they should, you, you mean a record contract? Well, yeah, in a record contract. If getting um, well, involved with a label, well, let's just it it they should do their due diligence at the label, uh, because every label, just like every band, has to start somewhere. So, if it's a major label, then they need to look for. I mean, in my opinion, they shouldn't be under contract for too many records. Mm. Um, that's one thing to look out for, and obviously, chase the highest advance and biggest marketing budget as possible. Now, for an indie label, they need to know that that label is going to be putting in some significant dollars into press and helping them get touring opportunities and touring budget. Um, Some indies don't even give any money whatsoever 
they mm-hmm. license the record, which is like right now, if me and you okay. start a band called Scott and Kyle, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, um, and we record an album that In Vogue really liked, mm-hmm. In Vogue could technically release that record and they just wouldn't give you a budget for another one. They could just okay. license that. So um, this, this, it's a complicated question. Uh, it's contingent on the band. Some bands, like a band like Mirror Eyes, who hadn't been around as much with as major of a touring history wouldn't have as much leverage as let's just say a band like story of the year okay. who sold a lot of records and toured a lot. So in your uh, opinion with, you know, like the record signings, do you believe that an artist should stick an independent after a record deal, you know, after like making like free albums for a label or should they, continue stay staying on the label it totally depends on the relationship with the label if the label is continually growing with the artist and giving them more opportunities i'm not anti-label i'm anti uh i was about to say a bad word but i didn't (laughs) i cut myself off i'm anti bad labels poopy labels so um it's funny on adobe i could say what i want Mm. so i'm glad i changed that (laughs) no beat no fine good stuff good stuff boom um so I'm sure you've dealt with people who didn't do that. Anyway, (laughs) so uh, it totally depends on the label. If if your label relationship is acrimonious, Hmm. get out. Either seek another label or do it on your own. Some bands have the ability to do it on their own, but just so you know, when you're doing it on your own, you are responsible for all expenses and everything. It's it's not as simple as just putting Hmm. your record on TuneCore and boom. So there's so many bands that go from indie to indie or indie to major, or indie to major to indie or major to indie or major or indie to nothing. So mm-hmm. it's, I wish I could give you a general <laughs> answer, but um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like there's some bands right now that are just putting out singles because mm-hmm. they're so frustrated with the full length process. Uh, so tell us a little, so we kind of mentioned it before. Let's talk about your radio show, Waldman Moldman's words. As I thought yes. it's a really unique piece of programming because what Thank you do you. on there is you sit back and let, talk with artists or whatnot and give advice. So what what inspired you to do that and start you know that whole thing and connecting with a whole range of people? Well, thank you for that. That that that's cool that you said that. I. I feel that there's a lot of radio shows out there where it's bands or students Mm -hmm. or whatever, and not to say that they're not good, but I've never heard a show where it was a manager talking to people. And I was lucky enough to have some of my artists premiere tracks on Adobe, which is the number one alternative music streaming site Mm -hmm. in the world which is quite cool, and they have lots of shows on it. And I pitched a show to the head of it and the program director um, about just what I told you, and I couldn't believe they bought. Mm. And it's been great. I, I went on, um, I got married in August, mm. and then I spent a week with my wife doing what's called a mini moon, where we kind of just like, didn't talk to the world for a while. And then right when I got back, I started interviewing people and I've already interviewed a number of guests and people tune in between 20 and 50,000 people listen every time I'm on. Wow. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. So, so this is like, are you going, so what are some big time goals for this radio show? Um, well, I've already had Kevin Lyman on the show. I've had, um, can't, Candy Hearts, mm. uh, who I pr- manage. I've had a lot of those people. I had that uh, Brandon Paddock on it, who's a big producer. I've had Hunter from AFI. I just want to continue to get guests on. I want pe- more people mm. to know about the show. It'd be nice to have a sponsor with it. I'm sure you'd like that too. <laughs> and um, I just want to have a bigger audience for it because it's a lot of fun. And I put in a lot of work into it. I I record at least one episode a week. Mm. I have to prep for each episode, and I've recorded enough episodes right now, so when I'm going on my honeymoon... So where can people and, go and listen to all oh, these archived you, videos? Um, well, you can, you can go um, on adobe.com, 
and they have the link to Waldman's words on it. They, they, they have a link to all their shows like on Fishkin. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Mike Fishkin. He's from Long Island too. And um, they can you could stream every episode that's been on the air, which is awesome. And every Tuesday night at 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern. Um, your time, yeah. it's on the air. So we're kind of running out of time. Um, that's fine. About 10 minutes left. So before we end, what are the biggest things that people should um, do if they want to go into management? Well, I mean, it's, you have to realize that as a manager, um, when successes happen, it's kind of a thankless job. Mm. And when failures happen, you're to blame a lot. So you have to have a thick skin. It would really help if you've had some kind of experience touring or being in a band or working for a label or just working as much as possible because mm-hmm. the band or the artist that you deal with, they're going to want to know what your track record is. Mm-hmm. And you kind of have to prove your worth. And the Columbia Records thing and the law firm thing and just being in bands out in LA and knowing a lot of people, mm-hmm. that's what gave me the ability to, as soon as I started, I was able to acquire quite a roster. So... You just need to meet as many people as possible and be yourself and shut up and listen. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show and discussing a little bit about management for those, you know, who, like, don't know a lot about it because it's really behind the scenes and people don't understand how much really goes into it. No, and I appreciate, you know, you doing something like this, student... Radio is how people like Howard Stern got their start. So you never know what could come of it, and I, I'm just flattered that you want me on your show. And it's just it's just a, a cool thing to do. I'm I'm always down for stuff like this. And if you ever want to have any of my artists on the show, yeah, definitely you, send me stuff. Or like I'll definitely talk to you if um when Mira get done with your right? finals. Yeah, get done with my finals first. Get done well, with your finals and. And be in touch in uh, 2017. And we'll talk when Mirror Eyes releases that top hit yeah. record, you know, and have them on Dude, the show. I would love that. And uh, big props to 516. All right. Have a nice day, Scott. You too, man. Have a good holiday. Bye.